All right, I recently got this uh, LDG AT600 Pro 2 tuner to pair with my FTDX10. Um, and uh, one thing I discovered when I was trying to do some research about how the two would work together uh, is that there is a lot of confusion out there um, about these uh, how these work together. Um, and so I thought it might be useful, since I didn't find any videos on the topic, uh, to make one and put it out there and uh, hopefully that could help answer some questions that some folks have. Um, <clears throat> so in my case, um, I have the tuner connected to the rig using uh, uh, the LDG, um, the YACC2 cable, which is, m my understanding is it's specifically for the DX10 and the DX101 um, and maybe the DX1200 as well. Um, and, uh, it's specifically for the LDG Pro 2 tuners. So what's that? The 100, the 200, the 600, and the 1000. Um, so I just wanted to show how that works, um, at least in my environment. Um, so first off to start, I want to show, uh, I guess what doesn't work. Um, and that is, uh, the tune button on the radio itself, um, so this is something that's different from some how some, at least, ICOM rigs interface with LDG tuners, maybe some other EAC rigs. Um, but I know on uh, ICOM rigs, when you have um, uh, a tuner connected to the ATU interface on the radio, the tune button allows you to control the ATU. That is not the case here. So in this case, when I single press it, it turns on, and that means that the internal tuner is turned on. If I long press it, it does a tuning cycle with the built-in ATU, which of course is not what we want when we're using an external ATU. That said, I can use the tune button here. Um, so I can do a long press and do a full tune or a short press and do a memory tune. Um, and so in this case, I'll do a long press and I did that pretty quickly, I guess it was already relatively close. Let's see if I switch over to 20 meters and do the same thing. So it looks like you got a match. And if I switch over to a constant carrier mode, We can see that we do indeed have a good match. So, it, as far as I can tell, it seems to work just fine using the button on the tuner. Um, the tune button on the rig itself does not work. Um, so again, like I said, I'm using the, uh, the YACC2 cable, and uh, I'll show that. Just in case folks are curious as to which one that is. So that is the cable <coughs> that has these two connectors. It has a, a standard 8th inch mini jack that goes to the tuner and a mini den that goes to the radio. Um, on the radio side, it plugs into the linear jack, not the radio's tuner jack. Um, I don't know enough about how those protocols work to really understand them, to be honest. Um, but I know that this tuner is intended to be used with amplifiers, you know, 600 watts. Um, so I, I don't know how you're supposed to use an amplifier that uses this interface and interface this tuner to it. I, I imagine if you wanted to do that you would have to switch back to manual mode, which seems like it'd be a bit of a downgrade. But, um, in any case, I don't plan to be doing that anytime soon, and maybe somebody will figure something out um, between you know now and then. Um, so yeah, I hope this was useful. I just wanted to show that the tune button can be used to kick off a tuning cycle. It does create um, you know an about 10 watt constant carrier signal from the radio to help the tuner do its job. So I hope you found this useful.